This is what is on the line tonight here in Las Vegas. Not one, not two, but four championship belts ready to find a home. Folks, the locomotive has left the station, and it's only picking up steam as Power Slap 1 is just beginning, and it starts right now. It's only fitting that history is being made once again in the fight capital of the world. For the first time ever, champions will be crowned at the first ever live Power Slap event. Power Slap 1. Darius the Destroyer taking on Wolverine, presented by Monster Energy. Unleash the Beast. It's all going down right here inside the Apex. This place no stranger to championship fights, but this is truly a first. It is my pleasure to be joined by UFC Hall of Famer Michael Bisping. And Michael, the last time we were here, it was an exhibition match in March, and now we're talking about four championship belts. Absolutely. A lot has happened in the last year, of course. Power Slap won. Here we go. Coming off the back of Power Slap, roll to the title. The incredible reality TV show. It introduces to all these crazy characters that are here for a reason, here to change their life. And of course, as you said, four title fights. Let's go, Dan. Let's take a look at those four title fights that are coming up here in just a hour or so. KO Chris Thomas against Jesus Gaspar Diaz for the welterweight title. John the Machine Davis against Azael El Pedro Rodriguez for the welterweight strap. Vern the Mechanic Kathy and AJ Hintz. This is gonna be a banger in the co-main. And then it's Darius the Destroyer and Wolverine in the main event for the heavyweight title. This is the one we built the card around. They were the coaches on Power Slap Road to the title. They have fought three times before. It's been competitive, but Darius the Destroyer has won each and every time. He's won every time, but every time has been a decision. And one of the events actually went 27 rounds. Now, that man we just saw there with the big beard, Ron the Wolverine, he is beefed up for this one. Darius came in right at the top end of the weight limit, 265 pounds. In the previous matches, the Wolverine has only weighed around 204. This time, a lot of weight, a lot of nutrition, beefed up to 230 pounds. And we all know power equals, sorry, weight equals power. Indeed, it does. These heavyweight striker rankings brought to you by Happy Dad heart seltzer no more skinny can so Darius the destroyer and wolverine one and two keep your eye on three and four this is the feature about the prelims the bell and the iron giant Dwayne crespo these two michael will be vying for the right to be the number one heavyweight contender and the bell brings a lot of power yeah, fighting out of Oceanside, California, originally from Hawaii. He says, the belt is in my future, and I just know it. Now he's got a record of 3-1. and one. There's his opponent, the Iron Giant, Dwayne Crespo, the biggest man in the house. He was a Thai boxer for eight years, mixed martial arts experience. Said he wasn't a fan of what happened in the house, but very grateful for the opportunity to be here tonight in a number one contender match. Seven of the fights on the prelims featuring slap competitors who could be just one win away from a title shot. Number one ranked Jules Scott going to face a stiff test in Robert Trujillo. He's the best athlete in the house with five pro MMA wins in five fights under his belt. Frank the Tank Holland has nearly 20 slap fights on the resume. Taking on Southern California boxer Dorian Perez at welterweight. One of the stars from season one of Power Slap Road to the title. Slap Jesus and Waylon Ice Cold Frost going at it. And Power Slap, as you know, has certainly been garnering attention all over the world, but social media is where it's taken off like a rocket ship, something this sport was made for.
Hello, everybody. Charlie Arnold here, and I've got a few names that you should be paying attention to as you are watching the prelims. First and foremost, as long as you haven't been living under a rock, you have definitely heard the name Slap Jesus. The welterweight enters his match versus Waylon Frost with a huge chip on his shoulder. He told me he feels like it should be him in the title fight versus Chris Thomas, so he knows tonight is an absolute must win to put himself yep. into contention. Slap Jesus, he is unapologetically himself. He says Power Slap was made for him because it allows him to truly shine as an entertainer. Now let me introduce you to Robert Trujillo. He will be the first man to walk out onto the Power Slap stage in just a couple of minutes. And he has a really great pro MMA record. In fact, it's perfect, 5-0. But he says tonight is when he's been feeling the jitters the most as he gears up to take on Jewel Scott. Trujillo says tonight is about more than just advancing in power slap because he also aspires to break into the UFC and helping to put a little bug in Dana White's ear as one of his good buddies from the competition, a light heavyweight standout, Vern Cathy. Also, Trujillo has prided himself, taking advice from his coach Darius the Destroyer throughout the entire course of the season. So guys, please do me a favor. When he takes the stage, check out his form because it is truly a technical wonder. Dan, back to you. Thank you very much, Charlie. Rules of Power Slap brought to you by 10X. 10X your business, 10X your income, 10X your life. Go to CardoneVentures.com for the striker. They must use a flat, open hand to the cheek or a clubbing foul will be assessed. Feet have to be grounded, no pivoting or stepping. You must declare a hand and a number prior to the strike. The defender, no chin tucking or flinching. Flinching is massive. It's a point deduction and the striker goes again, literally two for flinching. The defender does receive 60 seconds to recover after each strike. Three fouls will get you DQ'd. The defender does get two minutes to recover after they've been fouled. Power Slap is using instant replay. And if there isn't a finish, we do go to the judges' scorecards. What goes first is determined by the coin toss. And when these matches are only three to five rounds, this coin toss might be the most important in all of sports. How important is the coin toss in this? It's the most important part of this by far. There's a reason he feels that way. Yeah. Here's the deal. Before each match, both strikers meet for a coin flip. The winner decides if they want to hit first or get hit first. This guy chose to hit first, and it worked out pretty well for him. Whoever goes first is going to win. As simple as that. As simple as that. You get these big boys like this with this power, somebody's going to sleep. Not everyone agrees. Some fighters choose to get hit first, the theory being if they show the opponent they can take their first shot, it's a huge psychological advantage. Plus, if the fight goes the distance, he gets the final slap of the match, which could leave a lasting impression with the judges. Bottom line, when it comes to the coin flip, a little luck never hurt anyone. Well, almost anyone. The number one ranked lightweight in power slap is this man, Jewel Scott, ready for the first fight of the night, of which he is a part. He won the toss and will slap first against Robert Trujillo. 53% of coin toss winners have won their matches so far in Power Slap since its inception. Not as high as you might think, but when you're a skilled striker, it can certainly make a world of difference. And this is where the magic happens and champions will be crowned. The Power Slap table rising out of our Power Slap stage for the first time. Jewel Scott, a sizable favorite in no small part due that he has the first slap advantage. Battling to determine supremacy in the lightweight division, Jewel Scott has everything to gain in a matchup against Robert Trujillo that will have all fight fans watching from the first slap to the last. Proudly representing the ninth ward of New Orleans, 38-year-old Jewel Scott proved that age ain't nothing but a number he impressively defeated Anthony Green and Andrew Provost on his way to tonight's showdown with Robert Trujillo, an unbeaten MMA fighter now focusing on power slap glory. Trujillo once had a day named after him in his hometown of Raton, New Mexico. And he expects to make his fans proud once again by delivering a victory over Scott in about guaranteed to produce fireworks at the apex for as long as it lasts. Coming up next, Jewel Kid Diamond Scott 
takes on Robert, the real deal Trujillo. And here is the real deal, Robert Trujillo. This guy, the best athlete in the house, a 5-0 pro MMA record. He's been the main event for every show he's been in. These fighter walkouts brought to you by Kudo Protein Popcorn. Get pop with Kudo today at kudosnacks.com. Yeah, listen, this guy, you know, he's a legit fighter, but he said that the gym where he comes from, they couldn't get him the opportunities that he needed. That's why he's made the switch to Power Slam, because he wants to get some recognition, a little fame out of this, and then hopefully end up in the UFC one day. But 5-0 as a pro, as he said, 10-2 as an amateur, and as you mentioned, has his very own day dedicated to him back home. So he's already got a little bit of fame, but looking for even more so far in Power Slam. Lost first time out to Andy Barrera, then came back a round one KO, a vicious, devastating KO in round one, the first slap versus Anthony Green. This is the only lightweight match on the main card, that KO in his last fight coming against Anthony Green in the first round. And you were right, he packs a lot of power. Jewel Kid Diamond Scott coming in with a 2 and one record, and he did win the toss. Said he's been studying a lot of Darius the Destroyer's matches on YouTube to get ready for this, Charlie. Yeah, I love seeing the energy that he has right now because, Dan, when I spoke to him yesterday, it was right after weigh-ins. He was the last one to weigh in. Uh, he was not feeling too great because he moved down to lightweight after competing at welterweight during the reality series. Uh, but he said, really, he's out here to to improve upon his last outing. It really kept him up at night, so his training since has been very detail-oriented. He wants to avoid making costly and avoidable mistakes and really keeping all of his emotions at bay, at least, Michael, until it's time to celebrate, yeah. right? Well, listen, for any critics of the sport, he said, listen, we're not just standing there and getting whacked. We have special techniques that allow us to disperse the energy when we are hit. We have techniques for rolling and turning the slaps with the strikes. So normally, the people that are getting slapped and knocked out easily those are the people not using the correct technique. So, some interesting things said there by Jules Scott. 38 years old out of New Orleans, Louisiana, Jules Scott, been waiting for this moment for a long, long time. The tale of the tape brought to you by 10X. 10X your business, 10X your income, 10X your life. Go to Cardone Ventures. Dot com. Jewel Scott, eight years older, both men standing five feet, seven inches tall, a slight two inch reach advantage for the older Scott. You can see that he is a minus 280 favorite coming into this one against Trujillo, who has that 5 0, a perfect MMA record. Let's send it to our power slap announcer, Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, the power is on! Welcome to the Apex Arena, live from the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. This is Power Slap. Our first match of the evening is three rounds in the Power Slap lightweight division. Introducing to you first, out of the blue corner, he stands five feet, seven inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Out of Raton, New Mexico, Robert, the real deal, Trujillo. And now striking out of the red corner, he stands five feet, seven inches tall, weighing in at 155 and one half pounds. Ow! Out of New Orleans, Louisiana, Jewel Kid Diamond Scott. Hey! And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Chris Tyone. Winner of the coin toss and striking first is Jewel Scott. Go ahead and move up. Move your chin just over the podium right there. Okay. Stay set. Okay. All right, buddy. Hand and count. Uh, right hand on two. Right hand on two, that means you must measure. Okay, I will tell you your measure, and then I will count you. Yeah. There you go. You're good. There you go. Jewel Scott going to be okay. slapping first. 19% right of coin toss right winners win on the first slap. Let's see what happens here. Okay, Let's go. Measure. 
First one of the night. Got to keep those feet planted. One. Ooh. Oh, he eats it. Takes it like a champ. Fair, fair blow. No problem. Yeah, clean shot. Okay, he's gonna bring that Did not trouble Trujillo one little bit. Okay. Look at the slow mo. Slow mo looks great. Every time. No, Look up. how low stand Scott up. gets on the wind up. A lot of guys have copied his style here. Yeah, you generate right the power three. from the you feet up measure. through the legs okay. to the waist. Right on three. That Let's is see your what your heels got. Go. One, two. Get ready. Yeah. I mean, ooh. Yeah, that got him. It might have got him in fair the eye a little bit. Uh, fair blow. They called a fair blow, yeah. though, Michael. You saw Scott, though. He was really grimacing, waiting for that shot. You saw the face on him and the face afterwards as well. Not the most devastating shot, but yeah, certainly hurt him. And let's take another look from the table. I haven't seen this from Jules Scott before. It was a massive right exhale two. as he was getting okay. ready to receive. Now Trujillo right hand on, on the receiving end here for round two. Okay, that is your measure. Again, check out this low windup. Almost One. all the way to the floor. Knocks the cotton out of the air, but Trujillo stares him in the eyes. Trujillo's got a chin. I mean, it's never a pleasant experience taking a shot, but some people can take it better than others. Look at the power, look at the wind up. Look at the shot. Stumbled him, a couple of steps back. That first one rocked him, you're up, brother. Just a couple of mini steps. Oh, a couple of steps. Just a little step or two. All right, let's go, Rob. Trujillo, a legit MMA prospect. When I asked him about Jewel, he said he has a chin, but I feel like I have more power. He was on the show, power slap, road to the title. They're checking out the cotton in the ear to make sure it's in properly. Look at the right side of his face. Let's go, Rob. Hit him with it. Let's go. Right on three, you must measure. Right on three. Here's the measure That's going measure. on three. One, two. Ooh. Oh! He's out. 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 Wow. Let's go, baby. Wow. We talked about the power from Trujillo. There it is. Was. Undefeated professional fighter, knows how to generate power, knows how to deliver with technique, and my God, delivers the knockout shot, the first one of the night. And Jewel Scott is still down and out. Tonight's Monster Knockouts are brought to you by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast and the real deal. Unleashed it right here. Look at that, right on the button. And that's where you want to land. The sweet spot, it is the jaw. I mean, look at that right through it. I'll tell you what, that was so nice. Let's take a listen to this, Dan. Two. Oh, oh God. I mean, that is just disgusting. Look, it's, you can see how he just tenses up the neck. Wow. We talked about the power over and over and over. His goal to fight in the UFC, he wanted to come on power slap, garner a little bit of attention, and I'd say Robert Trujillo did just that. You can see the right side of his face starting to swell up a little bit in red, but I think he's gonna be just fine. I know that's yeah, back to back Scott. fights in which Jewel Scott has been knocked out. Yeah, sadly, sadly it is. Still kind of confusing. You know, when you get knocked out and you come around, you don't really know what's going on. It takes a while to really get your way with all. But there it is. First one of the night. And now for the official decision brought to you by Kudo Snacks, Kudo Protein Popcorn. Get pop with Kudo today at kudosnacks.com. Let's send it back to our power slap announcer, Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight seconds into round number two, referee Chris Tyone calls a stop to the fight. For the winner by knockout, Robert the Real Deal Trujillo. And there 
He is our first winner in our first match of the night. Yeah, that first one there kind of high, that bothered, and you see the fingers kind of scraping. I think that's might have what bothered Jewel Scott, but this is definitely what bothered him. Followed through. I mean, just a beautiful technique to that slap. And look, just falls like a pendulum. Stiff as a board, out like a light. Whew. Charlie, what we got? I'm here with the winner, Robert Trujillo. Truly the real deal, opening up the night on a very high note. You just said to me, technical beats everything, right? And you are very technical. You have so much power. How pleased are you with your performance? Man, I'm super happy. I love Jewel, he's my dog, but uh, out here it's all business. And like I said, technique beats everything. You said yourself, I have the cleanest form out of anyone in the competition. And I keep showing it, I'm the smallest guy here and uh, keep lining them up, I'm ready for whoever. Well, heading into the second round, you both were trading blows, eating each other's shots, but take me through that knockout. Did you know that it was gonna be such a huge momentous moment for you? I knew, I knew it was coming. Um, I, I messed up my placement just a hair on the first one, you know, and uh, the technique obviously wasn't there. Um, he hit me hard twice, but they were, um, none of them even rattled me. It was more of a sting. And once I threw that second shot, as soon as it landed, I felt it perfect on the button and uh, I put him out. Well, you have a perfect record in pro MMA, 5-0. and oh. uh, This is your second knockout in a row in Power Slap. I know one of the goals tonight was to get the attention of Dana White. You feel like you did that? I hope so. He was happy. And uh, like I said, I'm ready to be a two-sport athlete. I mean, Dana put me on. I'm ready for the UFC. And I'm ready for that bantamweight division. And I'm ready to keep knocking people out here as well. Who do you want to be next? Uh, whoever they throw at me. I mean, I don't, like I said, I don't really have any uh, designation of who I want, but I want someone. All right, Robert Trujillo, truly the real deal. Thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you, ma'am. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Charlie. We're going to have to work on the call out with Robert Trujillo. Like, he is so good. He needs to have somebody in mind that he needs to call out. That's what I'd like to see from this guy. What an impressive performance. All right, let's take a look at the six weight classes in Power Slap. Trujillo at lightweight at 155. He has to be the top guy in that division right now. Welterweight, middleweight. We have light heavyweight, heavyweight, and then super heavyweight. That's 265 plus. They, we did have a match on this card, but that was actually uh, canceled. So we're going to see some super heavyweights down the road. How are these matches scored? It's actually pretty simple. And to UFC fans, the scoring system will sound very familiar. Here's a skinny. A match can end via knockout, technical knockout, disqualification, technical decision, or no contest. If a match goes the distance of its scheduled rounds, a panel of three judges scoring the contest will render a decision to determine the winner. Like boxing in MMA, power slap judging is based on a 10-point must system, with a round winner scoring 10 points and the opponent scoring 9 or fewer. Judging criteria is based on the striker's effectiveness, as well as the opponent's reaction and recovery time. Reese Archer won the coin toss and will be striking first in our middleweight matchup between two veterans of the slap game coming up next. Whether it's MMA, bare knuckle boxing, or power slap, Reese Archer always shows up ready to throw down with Travis Aragon in his sights. One punch wants to make a statement. A fighter with an intensity Ooh, seen by millions during oh, Power oh, Slap Road to the there, Title, yeah. Reese Archer has seen it all in the I fight business. Guy. And with a shot at a world there championship go, within go. reach, should he get past Travis Aragon tonight, expect to see him bring all that experience to each swing in the biggest fight of his career. Also looking to make his mark with the Power Slap fan base watching, Travis Aragon missed making the house by a razor close split decision, but he plans on leaving the judges out of the equation with the first slap he lands. Coming up next, Reese, one punch archer, faces tenacious Travis Aragon. Here is tenacious Travis Aragon from Trinidad, Colorado. Nine years of MMA experience under his belt, including 
seven pro fights, the first pro MMA fighter out of tiny Trinidad, Colorado. That is right, and he also coaches the youth wrestling program at the local school there, so this man is very, very much embedded into the combat sports world. He's got three boys at home who are going to be watching this, supporting him. Obviously, when we saw him, he did lose to John Kennedy. But coming into this one, he said, I've never, ever been knocked out. He's been working on perfecting the slap. Says he's generating a lot of power. He's upped his weight as well. Last time we saw him, he was 182 pounds. He's beefed up to 190. No partying, extremely focused, living a disciplined lifestyle. I'm really trying to make something out of himself because he feels that this could be a huge opportunity and he feels like he's the perfect fit for this kind of product. And you can see that he has the power, six highest impact power of anybody on this card. Not too shabby for a middleweight when you're going up against light heavyweights and heavyweights in the measurements. Tenacious Travis Aragon, ready to roll. Reese, one punch Archer, making an entrance. This is another guy with some MMA experience. 35 combined amateur and pro fights in boxing and MMA. He had a rough time growing up in Battle Creek, Michigan. Oh, man. I mean, talk about an understatement, Dan. I mean, he was abandoned as an infant. His dad is in prison. His mommy said his words, probably still smoking crack. In and out of boys' homes his entire life until 21 years old. And then at 18, he became a father. And that really changed his perspective on life. Gave him some real motivation to change his ways and to not repeat history. Now, as you said, lots of combat sports experience, 25 amateur fights, 10 pro fights. He's done very enough with fighting. You name it, Reese Archer has been involved with it. The man's a natural, loves to deliver a shot, and he can't wait to get his hands on Travis Aragon. Said he hasn't ever held down a job for a long time. Very motivated to make something out of this slap fighting career, especially here in Power Slap. Yeah, I asked him, so what do you actually do for a living? He said, I'm an entrepreneur. And that just goes to show, anytime somebody says, I'm an entrepreneur, hey, come on. Listen, we all know, you ain't got a job. You don't know really what you're doing. But research it now. He's here to really make something out of this. He feels this is a massive opportunity. The night's just started, this place is filling up, the atmosphere is electric, the numbers of social media are through the roof, and Reese Archer is putting on a show, and I can't wait for this to get going. Look at this, you know, he does have the MMA background, but he's not wearing shoes. He's the only slap fighter I've seen, and we, we've called a number of these yep. since the exhibitions in March, who's come out with no shoes. Reese Archer won the toss, a slight underdog. The Tale of the Tape brought to you by 10X. 10X your business, 10X your income, 10X your life. Go to CardoneVentures.com. Reese Archer with the height advantage over Travis Aragon and a four inch reach advantage as well. Despite that, he is a slight, very slight underdog to the man from Trinidad, Colorado. And he's wearing no shoes. Going to be very interested to see how this affects Reese Archer. Never seen that before. Let's send it to Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is three rounds in the Power Slap middleweight division. Introducing to you first, out of the blue corner, he stands five feet, seven inches tall, weighing in at 184.5 pounds. Out of Trinidad, Colorado, tenacious. Travis Aragon! Uh -oh. And now, striking out of the red corner, he stands six feet tall, weighing in at 184 pounds. Out of Battle Creek, Michigan, Reese One Punch Archer! And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Kerry Hatley. The winner of the coin toss and striking first is Reese Archer. So Reese Archer up, gonna go up, first. Remember, 19% right, of power slap matches 
have Our ended Reds won the on the toss. first slap. What hand? What See if count. that happens Left here. On Both men Left with on one. mixed martial measure? arts yeah, measure. experience. Yeah. Measure. Reese has never been knocked out. Oh! Foul red. Foul red stepping. Stepping. Remember, he's not wearing shoes. That's going to be a point deduction. Fouls. I will kill you. He stepped before he even threw. He's stepping all over the place. Yeah, oh, he stepped crazy. Listen, I thought straight away when you highlighted, Dan, no shoes. Let me tell you, the canvas, it can be pretty slippy. That's why people wet the canvas sometimes in mixed martial arts to get a little right, bit more red. traction from the water. One point red, Having stepping. One point red, the stepping. Shoes will help. One point red, stepping. Without question. Feet, okay? Made a mistake there, big mistake. And he's already one point down. So what does that mean? All, all that means is that Travis Aragon, with his first slap here in the first round, he could literally just go up and give him a love tap. He's going to win the round. Now, in all likelihood, it's not going to be a love tap. No, 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 no. no. Because you've just got slapped in the face. You want to get revenge. Measure. Oh. What was that? He tried to roll with it. They're going to call flinching. Flinching red. That was a flinching. You want so another gets, snap? Okay. Two for flinching. One. So he gets to slap like, again. You want another slap? He's like, yeah. Okay, so what he tried to do is what yeah, that's fighters do. He tried to roll with yeah, the slap, but he went too warning early. Warning on the flinch. Way too early. So I spoke to some of them, and Measure. that is a technique. But you got to be microscopic with the timing. Let's go. Wow. He did it flinch. again. We're taking that. Oh, Take man. it. Yep. We're taking that. All right, you got to watch the flinch. Wow. One point red flinching. So one point red flinching, one point red flinching. That is a 10-7 round. Wow, so that's complete domination. Fouls are huge. All of these guys, when we talked to him, them in our fighter meetings, talked about the fact how they, they needed to get the technique down. They needed to be accurate. The first thing they wanted to focus on were clean strikes, and then they could focus on power. Because what happens is that when you're trying to land a blow with maximum power, you grit your teeth, you close your eyes. 20 seconds, let's go. You let the aggression take over. And that is why experienced fighters, okay, the best fighters in the world, they're the Left on one. Because they're not doing Measure. that. They're in control of their bodies. Researcher needs to get in control of his body. Oh. Oh. They call it stepping again. Red. Stepping. He's a stepping son of a bitch. There's no way you can win okay. this if you're going to step point red. every slap. Look at this. One point red. One point red stepping. Oh, I mean, that is, it's blatant. He's doing real Recovery. damage to Aragon, but every got? single time oh, it's a foul. Right hand on one. I mean, that's four point deductions, correct? Yes. There's that many, it's hard to keep track of. I mean, try to measure. Foul, red, flinching. He rolled again. I don't understand this. That's fine. Th this is not the stop. first time Reese Archer has hey, done this. This is his third That's slap a warning. Fight. Flinching. Good job, Travis. Good job. At this point, Reese Archer just needs to close his eyes and just let what will be. Measure. Be. Well, yeah, he, I mean, he, he closed the eyes, but he started rolling with it too foul, early. Red, flinching. And another flinch. One point this is red. unbelievable. One point That's red. One point Six. red flinching. That's sick. That's, that's I mean, just, just, just call the match. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's over. He lost. He's been disqualified. That's too bad. I really, feel, I really feel for Reese Archer. But listen, it was a strategic error not to wear shoes. Yeah, look, listen, he really was. You know, Reese Archer, we spoke to him this week. He's a very nice guy. He was here for a big opportunity. You know, he said he wants to change the world, change his life. We talked about the extremely humble beginnings where he comes from. This is a very, very disappointing night for him. On the flip side, Travis Aragon, he goes home the winner. He won this bout fair and square, but I'm sure he would have preferred to win it the good old fashioned way, if you know what I'm saying. I know exactly what you're saying, Mr. Biss, being a very disappointing performance for Reese Archer, an engaging young man, very easy to root for. Yep. Travis Aragon came in and did exactly what he needs hey. to do. And he's got the moves. Hey.
And I don't know if we've mentioned this yet, but he trains with Robert Trujillo, yes. who won the first fight. So these guys who train together are going to be the winners. Let's take a look at these shots. I mean, look at that Reese Archer flinging last week. I mean, come on. And it is time now for the official decision brought to you by Kudo Snacks, Kudo Protein Popcorn. Get pop with Kudo today at kudosnacks.com. We send it to Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, after round number two, referee Kerry Hatley calls a stop to the match for the winner by disqualification, Tenacious Travis Aragon. Aragon improving to one and one. His last fight, he lost that split decision to John Kennedy. So he's been pretty impressive every time he stepped up on the power slap mat. And you can see he took a couple of hey. good shots from Reese. Little nose, little blood coming from the nose over there as he makes his way over to Charlie. So Robert Trujillo wins. His training mate, tenacious Travis Aragon, wins as well. He's with Charlie Arnold. Thanks, guys. Here with the winner, Travis Aragon. That was a bit of an interesting match. Yes, it was. Um, let me take these earplugs out of my ears. It's quick. a good idea. Yeah. Okay, now I can hear it. <laughs> yeah, it was very interesting. Uh, Reese has a very hard hit, man. He hit me right in my eye. You know, kind of lost a little bit of perception at that point. And, um, you know, I knew I was going to eat that first hit from him. And uh, I wanted to bring the pain. But every time I came to wind up, I just seen him flinching, you know, it's like probably a technique he's trying to use, and, you know, swaying away from it. But, you know, I came in here, I did work and, uh, you know, Lord Jesus Christ, my savior, like John Bones Jones says, baby, I'm here to win. And um, I want that belt. Yeah, you got the job done. That's the most important part. A win is the most important thing at the end of the day. It, you did tell us earlier this week your goal was to put Reese to sleep. That was it. A little bit difficult to do so when he kept flinching. But, you know, from the perspective of just going out there, getting a win, doing what you could have, how do you evaluate your performance? Um, I think I did pretty awesome. You know, I did want to get a hit, though, and um, I just didn't have the swing on it for, uh, you know, he kept swaying away from it. But, you know, it's the name of the game sometimes. You're our trading partner, Robert Trujillo. Both of you already have achieved wins so far this evening. That's incredible. Uh, now that you've gotten this far, what do you want to be next for you in Power Slap? Um, just line me up, Dana. I'm ready, baby. <laughs> He's ready. All right. Well, congratulations. I appreciate that. Thank you. Guys, back to you. All right, Charlie. Thank you very much. Travis Aragon wins by DQ. Pretty good first two fights so far. Asbury and Provost set to throw down. Provost won the toss, and he sits at a minus 180 favorite over the more experienced Asbury. Alex Asbury has never backed down from a challenge as a fighter, and he has sit, insists that he's not about to start now as he looks to take advantage of his time to shine against Paul Teague. A fighter who garnered a lot of fan support for his heart and ability to come back from adversity, North Carolina's Alex Asbury gets another chance to make an impression in the power slap welterweight division when he faces Andrew Provost tonight. A combat sports veteran with three mixed martial arts bouts under his belt, New York's Provost jumped at the chance to get involved with this new form of fighting. And now that he's got his foot in the door, he has his sights set on bringing home a world championship. A quest that begins here in Las Vegas tonight. Coming up next, Alex Annex Religion Asbury battling Andrew Provost. And here is Andrew Provost from Plattsburgh, New York, a full time MMA fighter, 12 MMA fights, 7 and 1 as an amateur, 2 and 1 as a pro, Charlie. Yeah, you know, New Yorkers are just built different sometimes. And Andrew Provost, he's making lemonade from lemons, you guys. He committed to this fight with one week's notice. He's looking for a bit of redemption after an injury to his right during his December match versus Jules Scott. But he is not at all worried. He says his left hand does a lot of damage. If that is the case, he needs to use that hand instead. He's a 2-1 pro MMA fighter. So the short notice, 
no problem. He trains all the time anyways. He's ready to take full advantage of tonight. Yeah, going up against Alex Asbury, he said, well, I asked him, I said, what do you know about him? He said, well, I know that he's tall and he's skinny, and that's about it. Now, when he's not slapping people, he works as a cook. Uh, his lady, Tasha, she's going to be in the building here tonight. Of course, he was on the house. Didn't get involved in all the drama, but really enjoyed all the specifics of the training and how to land the perfect shot. So, feels he took a lot away from that and feels a much more improved slap boxer here tonight. And Provost did win the toss, which means he will go first. He's the minus 180 favorite. 0 and 1 is his record in slap fighting. Andrew Provost from Plattsburgh, New York, ready to make his mark. Alex Asbury, the DJ from the Charlotte, North Carolina area. What's his DJ name? Bisping Ash? Alex Annex Religion. Religion. You knew it, because you, you, you like on. the DJs, don't you? Yeah, I like the DJs. I said, what does Annex mean? He said, it's the Greek word for king. Now, listen, lots of combat sports experience with this guy. 11 and 0 as an amateur boxer. Five professional mixed martial, sorry, five pro boxing fights. DJ now for three years, and on Andrew Provost, he says, look, listen, I don't really know what to think about this guy, but I know how he feels like Provost chickened out of the show by saying that his hand was injured. Now, of course, he's going to say that. He's coming in very, very confident. Let's see what happens. But I like this guy. A lot of personality. Had a hard life as well. Was homeless for a while. That's kind of why he started fighting, you know. No easy, you know, it, nothing easy about the life that this man has lived. No, no doubt. Also a former college wide receiver at Winston-Salem State says he hasn't graduated yet because he didn't have the money to do it. No. He hopes to go back and get his degree. Perhaps this will help. Hey, if you want to weigh in, we want to hear from you. Just use this hashtag and hit us up on social media. Hashtag power slap one. The Tale of Tape brought to you by 10X. 10X your business, 10X your income, 10X your life. Go to CardoneVentures.com. You can see that Asbury is the younger man, also four inches taller and a five inch reach advantage. Despite the metrics, he is coming into this one as a plus 145 underdog to Andrew Provost, who will be going first. Justin Bernard, take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is three rounds in the power slap welterweight division. Introducing to you first, out of the blue corner, he stands five feet, 10 inches tall, weighing in at 170 and one half pounds. Out of Plattsburgh, New York, Andrew Bravo. Yeah. And now, striking out of the red corner, he stands six feet, two inches tall, weighing in at 164 pounds. Out of Concord, North Carolina, Alex Annex Religion Asbury. Let's go, man. Let's go. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Jason Herzog. Winner of the coin toss and striking first, Andrew Provost. All right, you can hear the coaching already coming from Andrew Provost's corner, Let's go. member of Team Wolverine yes, sir, on Power Slap, road to the title. On which hand and what strike count will you be striking your opponent? Right on three. Right on three. Stand by. Keep your feet down in the box. Right on right three. Right on three. Right on Remember, three. Remember, his arm must be healed because he heard it on the show. There was rumors he was going to hit with the left. One. Two. Oh, that was a big one. That was a big one. There's nothing wrong with that hand. Called a stepping foul on Provost. To be honest, Michael, I'm a little surprised that we're seeing this many fouls. Yes. Well, it's a big occasion. It's a big event. The first ever oh, power slap. They're fired up. Recover. They want to put their best foot forward. Got time, time, but you got to keep those you're, feet you're, planted. You, you got to come up a little for me here. A little bit more. Chin above. One step forward. Yep. Sir. One you gotta keep those feet on the ground. A little rising of the heel is allowed. Alex right, Asbury is fired up. He's getting Which the crowd pumped up, and he's getting me pumped right, up. Right, this right three. Keep your feet down in the box. Right three. 
Keep your heels down. Asbury, two and one, down, coming into this slap fight. And the biggest hands as well, right? Gargantuan. One, Gargantuan. Here we go. Oh. Oh. Fair. All right, clean shot. Fight up. Provost eats it pretty well. But remember, there's a foul. So that first round's gonna go to Asbury. You got him good though, and you're good. You're good, brother. On the first one. It's a stepping foul. That is a good point. Jason Herzog never took the point away though. I know, but you didn't call it. So it's probably a 10-9. So the first round would still go to Asbury. A little surprised that they didn't take the point, but they do give warnings on occasion. Should have been a, should have been a point deduction if you ask me, but still, what's going on here? Ah, uh, yes. They're, they're discussing it right now, yes. and they're yes. informing Jason Herzog that that should have been an automatic point. You guys got your point? There's a one-point deduction, one-point deduction for the stepping, one-point deduction for the stepping. On which hand and what count will you be striking your right opponent? Right on three. White, right on three. So right that's 10-8 Asbury on the be. first round. Provost needs a big one here. One, two. Let's go. Oh! 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 What a comeback for Provost! He's got 10 seconds to get up. He's Let's trying. see, he's trying hard. He's I don't think he's going to make it. He's grabbing that table. I don't know. He's up. Oh, oh he's, oh That's no. It. Oh, it's over. That is it. Oh, oh, oh. DJ oh, Alex Religion counted out. Andrew Provost over here, it. look at this. With the injured hand, Andrew Provost gets it done after the foul in the first. Tonight's Monster Knockouts brought to you by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. Here's another look. Perfect slap. Oh. Wait for it. I mean, look at that. The follow through. That's what gets it done. And Asbury still conscious, but trying to get back to his feet. Just wasn't going to happen. Grabbed the hold of the table, trying to climb his way up like a boxer does with the ropes in the boxing ring, but Jason Herzog, look at this, wait. Boom. Oh, man. It's a lot of power. Andrew Provost doing his little Connor walk around the stage. You know, his 13-year-old son, TJ, watching at home, loving what dad did there. And you can see, he had a minor heel lift on that. That's okay. You can do that. It can't be a full pivot, can't be a full heel lift. Oh my, I did not expect oh. that. I did not <laughs> expect to oh. see Andrew Provost come back with that. And now for the official decision brought to you by Kudo Snacks, Kudo Protein Popcorn. Get pop with Kudo today at kudosnacks.com. We send it to Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, after 17 seconds into round number two, referee Jason Herzog calls a stop to the match. For the winner, by knockout, Andrew Provost. That was impressive. Andrew Provost was on the show, started out in the slap mansion on Team Wolverine, injured his hand, ended up leaving the house, comes in on short notice, yeah. gets the stepping foul in the first round, and then delivers the devastating knockout against Asbury in the second. You can see that power from the pro MMA fighter just getting it done. Yeah, and the talk coming into this one was the damaged right arm, and perhaps he was going to throw with the left. But of course, who knows? Maybe he's just sending out a bit of a bit of nonsense, trying to surprise him, a bit of gamesmanship, because there was nothing wrong with that right arm. I mean, that right arm was fantastic. Tonight's social media post brought to you by Happy Dad Hard Seltzer. No more skinny cans. Charlie, let's send it to you. Guys, thank you so much here with the winner, Andrew Provost. Andrew, I got to tell you, when you were walking out, I said, New York guys are built different. I was definitely not wrong about that. You entered in on one week's notice. You used what we thought was an injured hand. Is that, was that the case? An injured hand, yes. Okay, uh, but you still delivered huge. Uh, What's going on with your hand, and how were you able to put on such a massive performance with that injury? 
Um, I planned to go in with my left hand, but I got up there and I made a decision to hit with my right. I knew if I hit him clean, I was going to put him down. Were you in any pain at all? It's fine. It's all good. Uh, now, you did have a foul in that first round. Maybe did that put you on edge a little bit, or did you know the next round you were delivering something huge? Yeah, I knew I just had to drop a bomb right on his face, and I did. Yeah, talk to me about the knockout, because it was incredible. Oh, um, I'd have to see it again, but... I mean, it felt pretty good. Go. Oh, there it is. I mean. Well, I told him I was going to huff and I was going to puff and I was going to blow his fucking house down. Do you feel like this is the redemption you were looking for? Because you had hurt your hand in your previous match and, you know, things didn't exactly go your way. You had to leave the house, leave the competition. Is this exactly what you wanted to happen? Yeah, I didn't get to show everything last time. So I'm glad I got the knockout and... Show everybody what I can do. Well, now that you've had a performance like that, I'm sure there's more time to show what you've got. What's in store for you next? Well, I can't wait. Put me on the next one. Throw me a bonus, Dana. Throw him in there. All right, Andrew Provis, congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Guys, back to you. I'm going to huff. I'm going to pop. <laughs> and I'm going to blow your house down. Love it. Andrew Provost. All right, let's take another look at how this went down. Yeah. Things did not uh, go great in the first round for Provost. That's right, you're gonna be in control of the feet. He wasn't there, but that one, that was the finishing blow. And what a shot it was. A lot of power generated, but look at that. That was so clean. No shortage of action at the apex tonight. Let's send it back to Charlie for more on our next fight. Yeah, thank you so much, Dan. As his nickname suggests, disturbing the piece is what Dorian Perez does best. He earned a lot of credibility after getting two power slap wins last March, though it was a car accident that prevented him from going into this power slap house earlier this winter. He is the current Street Beefs heavyweight boxing champion with 12 fights in the last 15 months. This experience surely going to come in handy against seasoned slap fighter Frank Holland. With a 10-9 record, he once went 12 rounds with Darius the Destroyer, but do not let his tough exterior fool you. Holland also has a soft side, working to take care of the mentally and physically disabled. This heavyweight slap show between Perez and Holland is next. Vernon Cathy looking all buttoned up at the apex. This is a bad man, though. So bad he's never been hit. Won never. the coin toss in both matches, slapped first, and it was game over both times. Two first round knockouts, including what Dana White dubbed the greatest slap of all time. He won the coin toss again. So if Vernon can do it once more tonight, he becomes Power Slap's first ever light heavyweight champ. Here is his opponent, AJ Hintz. Perhaps the Ohio native is Kathy's kryptonite. It's the old immovable force against an unstoppable object in this one. Hintz is strong like bull with neck strength we have never seen before in Power Slap. The co-main is later, but we are moving on to a heavyweight title that should be a good one. Dorian Perez gets his first shot at Power Slap since last March. The respect is clear between heavyweight standouts Frank the Tank Holland and Dorian Perez. But as soon as the referee waves them into battle, these two will fight like bitter enemies until the end. A pioneer of the sport since 2019, Frank the Tank Holland has earned the respect of his peers for everything he's accomplished thus far. But he's not about to rest on his laurels as the next goal on his hit list is a power slap heavyweight title. But to get that quest off to a positive start, 
he must turn back the challenge of seventh-ranked contender Dorian Perez, a talented 25-year-old who went viral with a boxing win a year ago and now turns his hands to Frank the Tank for what promises to be a fight to remember. Coming up next, Frank the Tank Holland squares off against Dorian, disturbing the peace Perez. And here is Dorian Perez, 2-0. Both of his slap fights have been decision, coming in as the minus 210 favorite. These fighter walkouts brought to you by Kudo Protein Popcorn. Get pop with Kudo today at kudosnacks.com. And let me tell you, this guy's 25 years old, but he feels that he got a late start in combat sports. So he's been trying to make up for that. So much so that he's had 12 fights in the last 15 months, a combination of boxing, mixed martial arts, kickboxing. He was an all-state footballer. You can see that he's a powerful guy stepping on the scale at 265 pounds, right on the top of the weight limit. He's coming for this, sorry, to get ready for this. He's been doing a lot of training, a lot of lifting weights, a lot of sparring and boxing. And look at this, having a fun time. I like seeing you give some props to American football. An yes. all-state left tackle in high school in San Ysidro, California. Frank the Tank Holland, 19 professional slap fights. He's been slapping for five years. 10 and 9's the record. Six of those losses have come to Darius and Destroyer, who hasn't lost to anybody. Now listen, when you look at this man, Frank the Tank, a big dude, 245 pounds, 19 slap fights, lots of combat sports uh, experience and history. But you will be surprised when you hear what this man does for a living. He works with mentally and physically disabled clients. All the patients are non-verbal and blind. He's a very deeply caring person. However, he does enjoy the physical aggression. He says it makes him happy. When he was younger, he had a lot of aggression, got involved with combat sports to try and channel that. So don't judge a book by his cover. This man is a very, very nice guy, gives back to the community, works with disabled people. But right now, tonight, Dorian Perez, well, he's on the hit list. And he does have the highest kinetic energy score at the PI, which means he comes at you with a quickness and some power. All right, the tail of the tape brought to you by 10X, 10X Your Business, 10X Your Income, 10X Your Life. Go to CardoneVentures.com. Frank the Tank, nine years older, a couple of inches shorter, and you can see Dorian Perez with a massive five and a half inch reach advantage. One of the reasons he is a minus 210 favorite Perez also slapping first when we talk to Frank Holland he says he doesn't anticipate a KO because of Dorian's size he's gonna have to outlast him in this one we send it to our power slap announcer Justin Bernard ladies and gentlemen this match is three rounds in the power slap heavyweight division introducing first striking out of the blue corner he stands six feet, one inches tall, weighing in at 261 pounds. Out of San Isidro, California, Dorian, disturbing the peace, Perez. And now, striking out of the red corner, he stands five feet, nine inches tall, weighing in at 250 and one half pounds. Out of Fulton, Missouri, Frank. The Tank Holland! And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Mark Smith. Winner of the coin toss and striking first is Dorian Perez. Wait, wait. Nice and accurate, feet down. Move back. Down. Great, guys. All right. How about Mark Smith, Michael, working the UFC event today and power slap? Congratulations right, gonna be your to Marab Dwalashvili getting yes. a huge win over Pierre right Yard. Mark Smith measure. used to be a fighter jet pilot, okay? Referee in two events is nothing. Here we go. One, two. Ooh. Oh, he stumbled the tank. Oh. Oh. Serious power. Look at that. It's all fun and games until someone gets knocked out. Defense position. Dorian Perez just slapped the shit out of it. Look at the feet here. Watch the feet. Good. Recover. Hey, count. Little bit of a step. 
Little bit. The, the right, table kind of saved him. Must measure. <laughs> measure. One. Two. Yes! Foul! Yes! Foul! Called a Flinty. foul. Oh, flinching foul. Flinty. Perez just ate it, though, like it was nothing. Well, he was celebrating, and he got called for a foul, so that's... He acknowledged the flinch. So a point deducted, hand, and Frank the tank, it looked like clubbing too. I right hand on three. I don't know you that I would have measure. called that flinching. That was on measure. the ear. Potential club, but anyway, moving on. Two. Yes. That was clean. That was clean. But don't Defense dismiss position. the fact that it was a two for one first yeah, round yeah. there. Frank the tank got two slaps. But Dorian Perez ate them like they were nothing. He really did. I mean, I think it's clear to see. I mean, judging off round one, hand Perez has count. a power advantage. Right hand on three. You must measure. One. Two. Oh, down goes the tank. There it is. There's that power. Dorian feels it. He's at six. He's at Seven. He's up. He's up. He's gonna have good. to step to forward. Oh, I don't know, man. Is he wobbling? Good job, Frank. Let's go. He's good. Right, let's go, Frank. Minute to recover and slap. Sixty right. seconds. You have a minute to recover. Forty seconds to recover and, talk to your and then deliver the blow. He's gonna talk to his coaches. He's gonna try and gather his senses and then slap him back. But let's have a look. You got, you got twenty five oh. seconds. This is your last Defensive shot. position. Give it to him, dude. You got this shit. Give it to him. I, okay? I will tell you, Give it to him. You that was close seconds. to another step from it? Perez. Go. He's go lifting up that good? back heel. It was not a pivot. Huh? It's just a question of how high Get that it, heel lift is. He's, he's, he's going to have to be seconds. careful. Let's go. He's got Look at nine this. seconds to oh, deliver that slap. He better go. Oh, we call time. Oh, we're okay. gonna get checked okay. out. All right. Fight it's off. That's it. That's it. Fight's he, off. He hadn't recovered in time, yeah. but the clock was winding down. I don't know if he would have got a slap off. Come down over here. Okay. Yeah, the box didn't like what he was seeing there. Didn't like the look in the eye. Stand by. Stand by. The doctor didn't like it either. That was that. Safety first. Let him right here. Get him on. Got my, wrap around my shoulder. So Dorian disturbing the peace. Perez improves to three and zero. Oh. Tonight's Monster Knockouts brought to you by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. Here's another look. Frank the Tank goes down in his 20th professional slap fight. Looked like he was trying to recover, just couldn't fully get there. I mean, listen, he wanted to. You know, but I'm not surprised, to be honest, the power that Dorian Perez generates with those slaps in round one and in round two. I mean, Frank the Tank Holland, listen, he can take a shot. He's been doing this for a while, but he's only human when it's all said and done. I mean, and look at that. Climbed back to his feet, all heart. Referee and the doctor had to step in to save him from himself. But Dorian Perez, that man hits like a truck. Dorian Perez, as the fans look on, <laughs> I'm telling you, watching this live really is unbelievable. He's a huge fan of yours, Michael Bisping. He lost his father. He says he listens to your podcast all the time, been following your career for a long time. He really uh, enjoyed getting to sit down and chat with you. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. We're seeing the wild side right now. He's celebrating the victory, but he's a nice, calm, put-together man. He's really excited to see where this power slap league is going to take him and what it's going to do for him and his family. Blowing kisses to the crowd. Got the cowboy hat on. Gets the knockout. Impressive stuff. So they're calling that a referee stoppage under doctor advisory. TKO in the second. Dorian Perez working his security at the Mexican border near his home and now to make things official, brought to you by Kudo Snacks, Kudo Protein Popcorn. Get pop with Kudo today at kudosnacks.com. Justin Bernard, take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, after 57 seconds into round number two, referee Mark Smith calls a stop to the match. For the winner, by referee stoppage, by physician's advice, Dorian disturbing the peace, Perez.
Tonight's social media post brought to you by Happy Dad Hard Seltzer. No more skinny cans. Disturbing the peace tonight. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes, He's having he a good is. time, man. Hey, that's got to feel good. You know, you come out here, this is a huge event, sold out, the atmosphere is electric. You go out, you get a second round stoppage. Come on, this you, is amazing. You know, the only guy probably having more fun than Dorian Perez, his little brother Isaiah, who he said is a badass in Muay Thai. His face just lit up when he was talking to us about his little brother. I'm sure Isaiah is watching at home right now. Charlie with the big winner. Guys, I'm here with the winner, Dorian Perez. He was so excited, he almost just passed us up and forwent his interview. How are you feeling, Cowboy? I feel great. I want to go see my little brother. I want to go back home and spend the rest of my time with my girl in our new place. So I want to see my cat. I want to see my family. So uh, this everyone... has all been great, but, you know, I want to see my people. Great is an understatement. Your slap was out of this world. Uh, you completely knocked down your opponent, a guy that has... 20 slap fights under his belt under this point. Were you expecting to be so dominant against a guy like Frank Collins? You know, me and my coach worked a lot on uh, like how I was going to follow through and the kind of the mistakes that Frank's made in the past. And uh, we were planning a Frank's retirement party. Well, also, we can't just talk about your hands. We also got to talk about your neck strength because you ate two slaps yeah. in that first round. But it makes sense because you have the sixth highest average neck force of anyone in this competition. I think it's higher now. I think it's higher now. Yeah, because that, that measurement's from the first uh, event last year. And my power has doubled since then. So it only makes sense my neck has doubled in strength as well. All right, so you've got a ridiculous slap. You've got an extremely strong neck. Where do you go from here? Um... I'm coming for all the heavyweights, man. We're, we're, we might all be friends, but uh, this is a competition at the end of the day, so I'm coming for your next. Who, who are you coming for? Ryan Phillips, my coach. <laughs> yeah, your coach. You told me you yeah. want your coach. Yeah, we're, we're good friends, and uh, he's a hell of a competitor. He's a goddamn modern-day warrior, and I'm a modern-day cowboy, so we're going to get that cracking. Well, Dorian Perez here to disturb the peace, no doubt. Yes, ma'am. Uh, mission accomplished. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Guys, back to you. I would not want any part no, no, no. of Dorian. No, no, no. Not for me, thank you. I can't tell whether the dance is good <laughs> or bad. I kind of like it. Certainly better than me. Look at this guy. He's having a whale of a time. That is the feeling you have when you've just knocked somebody out. All of tonight's competitors have been to the UFC Performance Institute and gone through a battery of tests when it comes to peak velocity. Isaiah Quinones is coming at you quick with two of the top five scores this season. Quinones will have to wait to show off that velocity. He lost the coin toss to Russell Rivero. And here is the Hawaiian currently residing in Texas. Got married a month ago, so the wind bonus would be a nice wedding present. Rivera won the toss, so this could be one and done. If he lands a clean shot, this dude is a beast. And it's certainly factored into the betting line. Rivera sitting at minus 260 entering this light heavyweight contest. Quinones, a plus 200 dog. Russell Rivero was all business from the time he stepped into the power slap competition, and nothing has changed for the Hawaiian as he approaches a pivotal matchup against Isaiah Quinones tonight. A proud Hawaiian now making his home in Texas, Russell Rivero embraces the just scrap philosophy embodied by all the top fighters from his island. And after making an impression on Power Slap fans, both in competition and the house, all eyes will be on him when he faces Isaiah Quinones. An upset loss to Nikolai Salkochi took Quinones out of the running for the first ever light heavyweight title. But with the experience gained from that fight and his unbeaten run on the regional scene, the Californian is ready to start his journey to the top tonight. Coming up next, Russell Kainoa Rivera takes on Isaiah Puerto Rican pretty boy, Quinones. Isaiah Quinones, a plus 200 dog coming into this one. 0 and 1 in power slap. He was KO'd by Nikolai Salkochi last 
November, so he's been looking forward to getting back out there to the power slap table and uh, change things around. Yeah, and he's got a lot of experience with slapping people's faces in other promotions. 32 years old, I said to him, what do you do for a living? He said, I work on spaceships. I went, whoa, whoa, whoa hold on, come <laughs> again. What are you talking about? He said, yeah, I'm an avionics engineer for Virgin Galactic. This man literally is working on spaceships, a very, very smart man. As you mentioned last time out, got knocked out. Round one, Nicolas Okochi, but he took a big shot. But look at this man, very well built, quite the athlete, very strong, but he has got a very tough match up here tonight. The blue corner, 4-0 and oh so far tonight. Perhaps that bodes well for Quinones. Russell, Kainoa, Rivero won the toss. Coming into this one as the minus 260 favorite. These fighter walkouts brought to you by Kudo Protein Popcorn. Get pop with Kudo today at kudosnacks.com. This guy, Russell Rivero, he's a bad man. He's got massive power, let me tell you. Works as a commercial electrician during the week. A very hard working man. Does 56 hours a week, then he goes straight to the gym, focuses on weight training, as you can see when you look at the bill. Benches 420 pounds, so uh, clearly a very strong guy, generating a lot of power. And he was uh, supposed to go up against Quinones once before in another promotion. He said, listen, this is all business. I actually like the guy, but we're here to slap each other, may the best man win. But Rivero coming into this extremely confident. His day job is working as an electrician, been working to help build out a data center. He said he drives an hour to work, has a 10-hour shift, drives an hour home, and then lifts weights. So it's yep. a long day each and every day for Russell Rivero. The Tale of the Tape brought to you by 10X, 10X Your Business, 10X Your Income, 10X Your Life. Go to CardoneVentures.com. One year separates these two men in age, one inch as well, and the reach Identical, 70 inches for both men, but Russell Rivero coming into this one as the minus 260 favorite, winning the toss and going first. Justin Bernard, take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, this next match is three rounds in the Power Slap Light Heavyweight Division. Introducing to you first, striking out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, 10 inches tall weighing in at 201 pounds. Out of Lancaster, California, Isaiah Pretty Boy Quinones. Come on, Isaiah. And now, striking out of the red corner, he stands five feet, nine inches tall, weighing in at 201 pounds. Hiding out of Fort Worth, Texas, Russell Kainoha. in charge of the action, Chris Tyone. Winner of the coin toss and striking first, Russell Rivero. All right, we okay, said we this go, a little bit earlier. 19% of the coin right, toss right, winners you won the coin toss. You're gonna go first. have ended Levin, things please. on the first slap. A little bit more. We okay. talked about the strength right of Russell there, Rivero, right. benches 420 okay. pounds, Hand and count, please. has yet right. to win in power right. slap, right. however. Yeah, the first time okay. out, he actually right got a knockout, three. but it was an illegal right. blow. Right. So he's got to focus on following Stay the rules, still. not just landing with power, because he's got the power. One. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Flinching! 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 Flinching foul call oh. on Quinones. That means he's got to take another one. Indeed. First step oh. in Is there a worst foul in sports? No, 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 no. Okay, there was a foul on both fighters. Oh, both there was a foul in. on both fighters. Flinching <laughs> takes precedence. That is a warning. Okay. So does he still get slapped? Another slap. Oh, he does. Okay. They should cancel each other out. You know what I mean? If your opponent fouls as well, you should be like, well, hold on. You don't get to slap me again. But those are the rules. Right now, Russell Rivero gets and another count. free shot at the pretty boy Kinyonis. Right on three, you must measure. Two okay, right for flinching. Three. Hold on. Uh, okay, bud. Stay right there, please. Okay? Right on three. That is your measure. Don't flinch. 
Isaiah. Here's the second slap of the first round. Two. And he's back up straight away. Straight away. Not messing around. He's still sticking, though. Oh, no, but look at him. He's firm. Well, let's he's not see. wobbling. Eyes a little watery. Yeah, he's 60 right. second recovery clock. Okay, we've got a foul. Stepping. Oh, one oh point another stepping, stepping foul. One point, loses a point one there. One point stepping. One point stepping. Okay. Here's the Watch feet again. Those. We've seen this a lot. Feet. Oh, yeah. a complete pivot. That was bad. He picked up the left foot and had a full pivot with the right. <laughs> So the crazy thing here is, Michael, that had Quinones not gotten up, okay. he would have won. Stay right here. Correct to Mundo. We've Perfect seen that before right yep, yep. Don't move. in Power okay. Slap. We've also seen that in the UFC. But Isaiah Quinones, he's a real man. He doesn't want to lose on a technicality. He wants to land a knockout blow. They came for a fair fight, but that is a point deduction. So by my math, that would be a 9-9 nine, nine round. It was a warning for the flinch. If he can land a clean strike, it would be a 10-8 round. And in regards to Quinones to steal one of the greatest calls of all time from our buddy, John Anik, that is not the cloth from which he is cut. Isaiah Quinones taking his time as we have 51 seconds on the clock. You're all right. Don't listen to these guys. Listen to me. Got 45 still. 45. These are long seconds. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. You feel it? But he's going to take his time, get his wits about him. All right, there you yeah, go, baby. Ryan Phillips, right, one of the top the five heavyweights okay. in power and slap in his corner. Really good coach. Let's go. Okay, you must measure. Okay, I'll tell you measure and your warm-up. It was great advice from Phillips. You get two right on three. minutes when that you've been fouled. Measure. And here he goes. That's all you need. Let it go. One. Two. Here we go. Oh, oh that was a nice one. Fair blow. Fair blow. Took a couple of steps backward. And that's a 10-8 round for Quinones. Okay, you got 40 seconds. Line up. Yeah, see, look. Look at the feet. The heel came up just ever so slightly on the right foot. But that's allowed. When you over-accentuate, when you clearly pivot like you would throwing a straight right in boxing or a hook, that's when you lose the point. Now, 25 seconds. Rivera's going to be quick. He's going to get a yeah. move on. I hope he's looking at the clock, which he did just glance up at the clock. You've he's got 15 seconds. He's waiting a little bit too long in my he's opinion. Got oh, got he better go on one. All right, he steps in with 10 seconds to go. Oh, he knows what he's doing here. Right on three, five seconds. One. Two. Oh! Quinones eats it. He just beats the buzzer, but Rivera was well aware of the time, knew exactly what was going on. That was, that, that was very close to finishing, so be careful. That was an eye shot. Coach, 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 coach. Chris Tognoni gave Quinones a warning, saying he was very close to flinching. He said, yeah, you want to try standing here and get smacked in the face. Yeah, it was close to flinching, but I didn't flinch, so shut up, okay? I just got the shit slapped out of me. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't. I didn't really see the flinch. Flinching. He has massive traps and really no neck, so the traps were sticking out. I don't feel like he really tucked his chin very much. Like, that was close to, to flinching. He's like, yeah, right on I know. Three. You must <laughs> that is your measure. That is your measure. One. Fast two, hands for Kionis. Go. Rivero shakes it off. Flinching. Foul. You moved. So you moved. When we talked to Rivero, right he, he almost, instead of moving away, he almost moves into the slap. Okay. Which right actually okay, that's increases a foul on the flinching. power. That is a warning, okay? Which seems kind of counterintuitive. Step in the box, please. 100%. Okay. Stay right but watch there. this. Stay still. Okay, don't move. Yeah. He, he turns the Stay cheek right and here. leans the Stay head right in. Okay, if go. only he We've turned the other seconds. cheek. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Well, I don't think you've okay, ever done that. Set. I've okay. never done that. No, you stay set, okay? Hand and kill. 
Right. right on three. You must measure. Quinones gets a second shot measure. here in the second round. One, two. Oh. Russell Fair Rivero ball. just chews on that one. Yeah, you know what I'm noticing? A lot of the time in mixed martial arts, when you land a low kick and it's a slap it's sound, up. it sounds good, but it doesn't That's do that much right damage. Sure it's the low down. kicks that make a thud that really have the bigger impact. And I kind of feel it's a similar thing because a lot of the time when you see the knockout blows, you don't get that big slap sound. It's more the thuds. Right on three. And remember what right Rivero said, he's working on dipping from the waist. He wants to throw it like a hook and he wants to almost cup their face. He's not looking for that big sound. He's looking for the power in the hand. One. Two. Let's see. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. We did the stanky leg. Russell Kaima Rivero. His first power slap win. He was likely down 2017 because of fouls. What a tremendous comeback win on the biggest night of his slapping life. Oh, I mean, what a final shot that was. Fair play to I Isaiah Quinones. Tried his best, got back to his feet, fought like a warrior, but the referee called it off. Tonight's Monster Knockouts brought to you by Monster Energy, Unleash the Beast, and there it was from Kainoa. Oh. He he talked about that. Look how the, it, yep. the hands almost cuffed a little bit. He did exactly what he told us he was going to do. That's and precisely what he said he was going to do. And bend the arm just a little bit. Bend the arm a bit, cup the hands. Try and, oh, man, that sound is brutal. Cup the hands a little bit, accentuate the palm connecting. Of course, you've got to be careful. You don't want to club them. Listen, when you look at these guys like Russell Rivero, I mean, he's shaped like a martini glass. He benches 420 pounds. He lifts weights six days a week. It doesn't always translate no. into power at the power slap table, but this time it did. 100%. And his daughter, River Aman, is watching at home. Recently married last month, Tucker. They're watching, very, very happy, very proud. And now for the official decision brought to you by Kudo Snacks, Kudo Protein Popcorn. Get pop with Kudo today at kudosnacks.com. We send it to Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, after 19 seconds into round number three, referee Chris Tyone calls a stop to the match for the winner by TKO Russell Kainoa Rivero. Tonight's social media post brought to you by Happy Dad Hard Seltzer. No more skinny cans. And he was pumped to be in here, excited to get his first win. All about the technique. Talked to us a lot about that, and I thought he executed it to perfection. And you see Kenyon is there, closing the eyes, grimacing, because he knows what's coming, but he didn't expect that kind of force. Lands that shot perfectly, sits him down, puts him out, and now gets to talk to Charlie. Yeah, Russell Rivero feeling good about himself. He came in here beating on his chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Russell, how's it feel to finally have your first win in power slap? Oh, I feel good. My boy's gone. I started screaming over there for all the Hawaiians back home. I love you guys, bro. Well, you know, when you looked at the scorecards, you were definitely down heading into the third round, but it's not over till it's over. Uh, did you imagine the third round was gonna be all yours? Fuck, I felt that. I felt the fucking, I seen my boy. My boy Cole, shout out to you, Hawaiian. I seen him, I felt the fucking islands in my veins. So I had to come out there and knock this fuck out. <laughs> yeah, I know that you have a lot of respect for your opponent, but you had to get the knockout. Take me through this right here. I don't know, I miss him. Yeah. Yeah, they sitting down right now. Yeah. Fuck. Right on, line them up. Step back. Boom. Right hooker. Good night, boy. Fuck, <laughs> easy. Good night is right. It looked like you made an adjustment in that third round. What'd you do? 
Yeah, no, because in the beginning, usually how I do is I line, I get my, my distance from my hand, but the first two, I thought I was going to fucking knock him out, so I never really line him up, but boy, that guy, he can fucking chin, his big, bald head, he's fucking like a bowling ball, so I was surprised he ate that motherfucker, boy. It's a nice target, huh? Oh, yeah, it was big and easy, so I just had to adjust a little bit, found that chin, and bang, he didn't sleep, so... Well, you're a part of the light heavyweight division. Some major heavy hitters in this one. Anyone you might have your eye on next, sir? Oh, whoever win tonight, AJ and Vern, you know what I mean? I like come for the fucking heavy hitters. So that's all we all hit. That's all we're here for. Forget that belt and make that money. So let's go, baby. Well, you're one of them now. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Guys, back to you. Russell Rivero wants the best of the best, and perhaps he'll get that the next time around. Coming up. Southern California's Emmanuel No Love Muniz coming into the night as the third ranked middleweight power slap. And to hold on to that spot, the former all conference linebacker will need a second straight win over an opponent that he is very familiar with. Muniz won by unanimous decision over Wesley Drain last December. But this time around, all the smoke plans to bring a little extra. Drain feels like he has perfected his technique and he's ready to show it off tonight. Our middleweight title contenders are in the building. Former Marine John the Machine Davis currently sits atop the middleweight rankings as the number one contender. But undefeated Azael Rodriguez believes his full-time training in slap and MMA is enough to go home with the goal. Only one man leaves as Power Slap's first ever middleweight champ. And we're going to find out later tonight on the main card. It's not very often Las Vegas sees a fight card with four titles on the line. That's exactly what we have here tonight. And no division is more stacked than middleweight. These middleweight striker rankings brought to you by Happy Dad Hard Seltzer. No more skinny cans. The machine, John Davis and Aziel Rodriguez one and two, but Muniz, Drain, Kennedy, Salcochi, and Aragon all able to bring it. It was a good battle last year. You might remember this when John Kennedy and Wesley Drain threw down a back and forth contest One, between these two guys two. that yeah, ultimately I mean, ended up in, in, in having Drain get his hand raised. But check out that cheek, Michael Bisping. Yeah, look at this. I mean, Red, start it just shows the kind of power yeah, that these men seven. are generated because you see, look at that. I mean, that's disgusting. It looks like he's chewing on a golf ball. You know, I mean, that is one serious hematoma on his face. They build him tough in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, and this one truly is a pick em, according to the odds makers, despite Drain winning the coin toss on Monday. Cannot wait to get going here. Aiming to be the next in line for a shot at the middleweight title, Emmanuel Muniz and Wesley Drain both know exactly what's on the line here at the Apex, so don't expect them to leave anything up to the judges tonight. Amateur boxing and MMA paved the way for Emmanuel Muniz to make it into the Power Slap House, where the 23-year-old knocked out Mike Webster with a single blow. And while there's no drama between himself and fellow up-and-comer Wesley Drain, No Love expects to issue a similar fate to his foe. Aiming to score a knockout of his own tonight, Oklahoma's Drain is as no-nonsense as they come in this sport and his goal of becoming the best middleweight in the world means he'll pull out all the stops to get his hand raised. Coming up next, Emmanuel No Love Moonies faces Wesley All the Smoke Drain.
Wesley, all the smoke drain, won the toss, a minus 110 favorite. Now he's one and three, but that doesn't tell the whole story. He was DQ'd for fouls in one of his matches, third match. He had to slap with his offhand because he was injured. This guy can slap, Charlie. Yeah, Dan, Wesley Drain will forever be remembered from getting that massive hematoma on his face. But the better part of all that was is afterwards, he turned right back around and he delivered a knockout hit. So he says expect more of that take no prisoner approach tonight because the injuries that have really plagued him the last few months, they're all healed. And like you mentioned, Dan, he won the coin test. So he's ready to bring all the smoke, which is his nickname against his opponent, who he calls his weakest one so far. How about that? Yeah, no, I know, because let's remember, this is an immediate rematch. Now, Wesley says, listen, I'm not bothered, you know, Emmanuel hit me with the weakest shot I've ever felt. Even though he lost by decision, he says Emmanuel hasn't hit his man body yet. He doesn't have man strength, okay? He just hasn't got it. He says that he cannot hit the way I can. He doesn't generate the same kind of power, which is big talk considering the last time they went up against one another, he actually lost. Does have some MMA experience. Trained and lived at Jackson Wink for six weeks. Wesley Drain looking to make his mark here tonight. No love. Emmanuel Mooney's two and one in power slap. Minus 120 according to the odds. Says his girlfriend helps him train. Allison has been very supportive. Holds mitts for him a little bit. Yeah, love seeing him doing what he loves to do, which is excel in combat sports and power slap. Look, listen, he's got an interesting one because the first time he competed for power slap was against Mike, against Mike Webster. And Mike Webster actually opted to be the, uh, you know, he won the coin toss and he said, yeah, yeah, no, hit me first. Not and a Emmanuel, good idea. Emmanuel said, yeah, sure, no problem. Boom, sit down, put the man to sleep. Big power, Emmanuel Muniz coming in, only 23 years old, so. He might not be an old man, but he's certainly <laughs> a man, because remember, Wesley says he hasn't got no man strength. Well, I guess we're going to see. Well, Drain, seven years older. Muniz did tell us that he hurt his elbow and wrist in his last two fights. Looking at working on his form and doesn't want to hyperextend. The tale of the tape brought to you by 10X. 10X your business, 10X your income, 10X your life. Go to CardoneVentures.com. You can see the age disparity there. Both guys six feet tall, a slight two inch reach advantage for Wesley Drain. And this one is almost as even as you get without being a pick -em. I'm choosing to send it to Justin Bernard right now. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is three rounds in the power slap middleweight division. Introducing to you first, striking out of the blue corner. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 185 and one half pounds. Out of Telecon, Oklahoma, Wesley, all the smoke train. And now, striking out of the red corner, he stands six feet tall, weighing in at 185 pounds. Out of Ontario, California, Emmanuel No Love Muniz. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Kerry Hatley. Winner of the coin toss and striking first is Wesley Drain. Okay, Blue. I need to chalk up, but I'm gonna go. Okay, go chalk up. Drain gonna go chalk up here from Telequa, Oklahoma. Father to three kids. Three. Hand and count. Five to nine years old, so you know right he's busy two. at home. Very right busy man two. going Measure. right on two. One. Oh, no love. Does a good job eating that one. Yeah, nice to see him throwing with his correct arm. Remember, last time I threw with his left, this time hit with the right. Decent shot, nothing earth shattering. And we were a little perplexed by that last time, but we did find out that he hurt the knee, so he felt like he couldn't right on twist on right that, on so he had to throw with his offhand. Measure. Let's see how Mooney's answers. One, two. Oh, he stumbled him in style. 
is how he answers. Waddles in big, has to hold on to the table to stay upright. I mean, that's a standing count, if you ask me. Oh, you see the palm go all the way through. Let's take let's, a listen. Yeah, let's hear this one. Oh, boy. Recovered two. Oh, oh, oh. that's sick. Just like a massive overhand right. Uh, I'm really impressed by the coaching of Ryan Phillips. Telling him to breathe, telling him to take his time, but you do have to be mindful of the clock. We are under 20 seconds to go now. Right on two. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to rush back Measure. into it when you just got rocked, which it clearly was. 10 seconds, though. Time to get a move on. One. Fair yeah. Blow. Fair blow. They're calling it a fair blow. It, it was almost like a little bit of like a graze. It didn't It didn't seem like he got the whole hand on there. Sounded clubbish, but it looked like Emmanuel Muniz could take them all day long. Gave a little grin right after. Let's take a look. A bit of blood flew out yeah. there. Blood from the mouth of Muniz. Right on three. Right on three. Measure. No, it was a clean blow. We just didn't uh, get the sound that we're accustomed to here at Power Slap. Maybe we One, will here. Two. Ah, look at that. So Wesley takes round two. Muniz unable to duplicate what he did in the first round. Looks like that was more fingers. It didn't land as flush as he wanted it to. According to the odds, We're Michael, good, baby. this was expected to be the closest Money's fight the on the card. Right. Drain right. minus 110, Mooney's coming in minus 120. Here comes Drain in round three. Right on two. I was concerned right for two. Drain, Measure. though, after round one getting rocked the way that he was. The accumulative effect of the blows adds up. But he took that one very well. One. Oh. Fair blow. I love how Muniz so just kind of bounces back, this, okay? makes eye contact before he walks away from the table. And straight away over to his coach. Okay? Straight away, maximize the 60 seconds. 44 seconds. I mean, he takes a big shot here, eats it well, good gamesmanship, doesn't let on, doesn't let his opponent know that he's hurt, right that he's injured. Red, doesn't right give him that three. psychological advantage. Measure. And as we see here, neck and neck, my scorecard going into this one. One. So, this could decide Two. the fight. Oh, oh wow. Fair I mean, that was a, that's a tough one to score. That is a yeah. tough one. It is. That's it. Both with decent blows, both fair, decent accuracy. Don't tell me you're going to go with. Go with what? Can't go with a draw. Good job, Can man. you? Good <laughs> you cannot. Let's hang over here a little bit. Yeah. Well, hey, that was according to the odds, most evenly matched slap yeah, fight yeah. on the card, and that's exactly what we got. First decision of the night, correct? It's kind of weird. I don't, I don't know what to do with myself. We haven't had any decisions thus far. <laughs> you better tell you. Wesley Drain coming in one and three. We talked about some of the issues he had. First match was a disqualification because of fouls. We've seen some of the foul issues with other slap fighters tonight. Third match, he had an injured knee, so he's slapping with his off hand. Manuel Muniz coming into this one two and one. And it is a rematch. That last fight was a win over Muniz. So you're giving this one. Yeah, I mean, look, listen. To drain. They're very close, but rounds two and three, I think Wesley landed the better shots. You know, Muniz took them well, some nice gamesmanship, but, you know, listen, it's close, very close. But if I gotta pick a winner, I'll give it to Wesley Drain. I think he takes this one. Going to the scorecards for the first time tonight. We're waiting for the judges' scores to be tallied as we take a look at the super slow-mo replays. This stuff never gets old. Wesley Drain and Emmanuel Muniz going back and forth the first time tonight. We have gone to the judges' scorecards. A slight step back for Muniz, and he comes oh. right back. And that was 
more of a grazing blow. It always looks a lot worse in super slow-mo. It always does in super slow-mo, but in real time, it hurts way more. But look at that. That's a solid shot. You see the blood go flying from the mouth of Muniz. And now for the official decision brought to you by Kudo Snacks, Kudo Protein Popcorn. Get pop with Kudo today at kudosnacks.com. Send it to Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. Judge Diamato scores the contest 29-28, Muniz. Judge Montalvo scores it 29-28, Drain. And Judge Bird scores it 29-28 for the winner by split decision, Wesley. All the smoke, Drain. There it is. How about I mean, you, man? You I mean, have a future listen, judging in this sport. I do know what I'm talking about. Michael, Michael Nostradamus Bisping, as I'm known <laughs> in certain circles. You know, listen, it was a close match. Once again, Wesley Drain walks home, stumbles home, whatever word you want to use, with a swollen face. But let's take a look at some of those shots. As you said, oh, the there's the blood. The blood. I mean, that sealed the deal for me, doing a little bit more damage. It's not mixed martial arts, but still. Damage is a key factor. All right, Charlie, over to you. Winner Wesley Drain winning by split decision. Our first decision win of the night. Did you feel going into that third round, once it was all over, did you feel you had done enough to get the victory? 100%. 100%, come on, come on. No one else thought that. That's horrible. I mean, it was very close. So you say absolutely, why so? Because you gotta get faith in yourself. And 100% I do. Like, okay. I, I never doubt on myself, so. Okay, well, we, we love the confidence. Uh, something else you had mentioned coming into this that Emmanuel Muniz was your weakest opponent thus far, but he brought a pretty good fight tonight. I was still smiling, though. So, so was, was there any adjustments that you felt were needed to make throughout the course of this fight to put yourself on top? Nope. Okay, well, let's look at one of your shots uh, because this one stuck out to all of us. Uh, take me through this one right here. You got anything to say? Good. I'm gonna knock him out. Oh, uh, anything next for you? No, ma'am. All right, a man, a few words. All right, we we love it. The quiet confidence, if you will, Wesley Drain. Congratulations, guys. Back to you. Wesley Drain letting his slapping do the talking. Clearly tonight, the biggest win of his power slap career. I mean, he's just been slapped in the face pretty hard. Maybe his muscles in his face, you know, talking might not be that easy, but you gotta do a better job than that, Wesley. Great performance on the stage, on the microphone. Come on, buddy. You gotta <laughs> let it go a little bit. Now he has something to shoot for. There's no doubt about that. Charlie, what do you have? All right, Dan, well, Waylon Frost has proof that sometimes it's not what you know, but who you know. He was initially hooked on power slap by one of the current coaches, Donovan Crosses. They are both from the same small town in Arizona. While Frost mostly kept to himself in the power slap house, tonight he says that changes as he's looking for a bounce back win after tidying up his technique with Cross's help. Although you know his opponent, Slap Jesus, is not going down easy. He won the coin toss and he says he's going for a one and done to prove why the powers that be should have had him fighting for the title tonight. Slap Jesus is certain this is his calling and says he looks at Power Slap like a baby and will do whatever he has to do to take care of it. Waylon Frost and Slap Jesus are taking the stage next. My nickname is Slap Jesus. I've been slapping people in the streets since 94, and now I gotta give the whole world a taste. It's the best nickname in the slap mansion. Michael Smith, AKA Slap Jesus, fighting out of Lake Tahoe, California. Now he's home. So gonna need the hand of God for this one, Judas. Smack Smith, bitch! Oh! Down the back street, not the guy you wanna meet. Slap Jesus comes in and shows us that he is a force to be reckoned with. Gonna stop this bout. Declaring the winner by TKO, Michael Smith. Line him up, I'm gonna knock him down, baby.
Power Slap 1, Darius the Destroyer versus Wolverine is presented by Monster Energy. Unleash the Beast. Busy Saturday night at the Apex, just making a little history, that's all. Four championship matches on the way, but first should be a good one at welterweight next. Slap Jesus, a sizable minus 240 favorite against the always dangerous Waylon Frost. Fighting has been the focus of Michael Smith's life for a long time, and now the focus is on Slap Jesus as he competes on the biggest stage of his career against another rising star in Wayland Frost. All it took was one slap from Michael Smith to introduce Slap Jesus to the combat sports lexicon. And after four wins over Josh Reed, Alex Asbury, Paul Teague, and Jesus Gaspar Diaz, the charismatic Californian has proven himself to be one of the top welterweights in the world. But to get a shot at the title, he must first turn back the challenge of Arizona's Waylon Frost, a quick study in the sport who has made his presence felt immediately thanks to his gritty efforts and willingness to take on all comers in his quest for power slap glory. Coming up next, it's Michael Slap Jesus Smith meeting Waylon Ice Cold Frost. Waylon Ice Cold Frost, 26 years old from Payson, Arizona. Got into slap when he was recommended by his buddy Donovan Cross, who is the coach in the red corner tonight. Interesting guy, likes to do a little bit of everything. Yeah, that's right. Talking to him this week, I asked him why did he get involved with this. He said, listen, I never really knew much about it, but I wanted to try something new. I'm here for the competition and to do some manly shit. And that's his quote there. Now, going through the house, he enjoyed the whole experience. Had to put eight pounds to make the weight this week. So, feels that he's a bigger, stronger version of himself. And when he got involved with this, he said, slapping is actually way more complicated than I expected. There's a lot of uh, nuances to it to delivering the perfect shot, to eating the shots and staying on your feet, not getting knocked out. So you're surprised by the, the technical aspects of this, believe it or not. He is a life insurance salesman for yeah. a living. 0-2 in power slab. He had a DQ after he knocked out Alex Asbury. He got called for a stepping foul in his last fight. Second round KO to Chris Thomas. Plus 190 is Waylon Frost, so he's the dog going into this one against one slap Jesus. Our first look tonight at Michael Smith, AKA Slap Jesus, nickname given to him by Jewel Scott, best nickname in the Slap Mansion during the first season of the show, Power Slap, Road to the Title. This dude's a character. Yeah, that's a word. You know, if you ask him, he says that I am a natural entertainer. He said, listen, I was always a troubled kid. I was getting into fights. You know, I always had a chip on my shoulder. I'm just used to it. I've always been a dog. I had a handsome little brother. I was the ugly kid in the family. I got bullied a lot, but I always owned it. Got into a lot of fights as a kid. And, you know, yeah, yeah, he's, he's been a troublemaker. You know, he was annoying a lot of people in the house. He was annoying a lot of people this week here at the Apex, yeah. literally giving some of the security to run around, making them chase him and things like that. He's a little bit round the bend, you know, but it takes all sorts in this life. But he's perfect for this, putting on the show right now. And he's the minus 240 favorite, will be striking first. The tail of the tape brought to you by 10X, 10X your business, 10X your income, 10X your life. Go to CardoneVentures.com. 11 years older is Slap Jesus. He's working from a three inch height deficit and he has a one inch reach advantage. Slap Jesus coming into this one with a 4-1 record and three knockouts. Justin Bernard, we send it to you. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is three rounds in the Power Slap welterweight division. Introducing first, striking out of the blue corner. He stands six feet, two inches tall, weighing in at 165 and one half pounds. Out of Payson, Arizona, Waylon Ice Cold Frost. 
And now, striking out of the red corner, he stands five feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 161 and one half pounds. Out of Lake Tahoe, California, Michael Slap Jesus Smith. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Jason Herzog. Winner of the coin toss and striking first, Michael Smith. Look at some of the props to watch. Will there be a knockout in the first round? Plus 160, yes. Minus 200, no. Michael Smith does have one first round knockout on his resume and don't blink because he goes quick. He doesn't mess around once he steps into the box. Yeah, that's right. You know, listen, as we said, he's a character. You know, he's fun and games, right hand, little, one. whatever right word you want to call him. When it comes right to this, one. he's all business. He right delivers fast, one. hard, powerful shots. Look at him. Right on one. Just a performer. When you're ready. He's going to. The clock starts when you go. He, 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 he's waiting for the clock to start. It doesn't run on the first strike. Oh, Raylan wow. Frost is about to get baptized by Slap Jesus. We'll see if that comes to fruition, but he's certainly trying to get the crowd riled up. Devin Schwan in the box, in the audience. Right on one, right on one. Oh! He landed a good one. It could have been a flinch. Looked like Waylon turned a little early. I Let's mean, see. he didn't like it regardless. Look at that, shaking it off, rubbing his face. Oh, oh yeah. that's a flinch. That's a flinch. Not the worst flinch we've seen, but they didn't call it just a little bit. They do have a review official, just like in the UFC here, but Waylon Frost is hoping that they don't check it out. But if you ask me, that was a flinch, that was a foul. You see the replay, you can see him swaying the whole upper body. As of right now, no flinch has been called. All right. Waylon Frost, now the striker here in the first round. 10 seconds on the clock. 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Ten seconds. We got 10 seconds, he's good. Five seconds. One, two. Oh, 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 oh. Slap Jesus stays on the feet, but the hair flying all over the place. Now, keep in mind, for the judges, when they're judging this, it's the blow, and it's how the blow is received as well. If you ask me, I'm giving that to Waylon Frost. Yep, I think you're right. Talk, you're about 30 seconds. 30 I think seconds. you're right. It's amazing how calm, cool, and collected Slap Jesus seconds, looked okay. there when he was receiving the blow. It's you're almost good. like, yeah. But that rocked him. Yeah, without question. Stand by, stand good by blow, you. but he's fine. What count and which hand? Right on one. Right on one. Right on one. 12 seconds. Right on one again. Oh. Well, the first was not like that one little bit. Breathe, breathe in and out. So, breathe in and out. Fair blow. 50 seconds, 50 seconds. Waylon has a different seconds. philosophy for oh, receiving here. the slap. How are we doing? Yeah. He turns and almost walks away immediately after. Before you do your strike. Yeah, yeah. And 40 yeah. seconds. Absolutely right, Dad. Part it's of not... the idea is staying in the box. 100% stay there, show your opponent you can take it, look him in the eye, wink at him, blow a kiss, laugh, smile, whatever you want. Don't turn around walking away, shaking your head in apparent agony. Lots of power. Yeah. All right, 20 seconds. Let's go up there. Let's go up there. A lot of power, okay? A lot of power. What count and which hand? Right on three. That seconds. was Ryan right Phillips coaching three. in the blue corner, talking about the power. One, two. Oh. Uh, he's... Yeah, had to grab the podium. It, it's hard to tell with Slap Jesus when he's really stunned and when he's not. I don't know. He, he looked pretty stunned. He was holding on to that table. I think that's a 10-9 again for Waylon Frost. All right, so you have it. 10-9, 10-9, scoring both rounds for Waylon Frost. You got 35 seconds. 30 seconds. You know, I don't know, actually, because... <laughs> let's remember. 
Waylon Frost hey. turned around and walked away. Toes is clean, Ken. You got 20 clean. Seconds. 20 that seconds. That was very close to a club. He was using the base of that hand on the strike. I'm going to give Jesus round one, Waylon Frost round two, neck and neck. All right. Going into round That's three. how we round like it, Bisping. All to play for. He comes quick. Jesus. Great there, job. there is a method to the He's madness good. Good. for Waylon Frost. This He's good. It's, it's yeah. cool. it, look at this. Yeah, this is it. Is right this here, not brother. a flinch? That's this. a flinch. Oh wow. I wouldn't say you're down, but let's think you're He's down. He's rolling okay? with it early. A lot of these guys have talked about got, trying buddy. to do that. Very difficult to time, and he's getting away with it right now. He's getting away with it. Yeah, but that's a flinch all day. Yeah. If they're yeah. looking at that from that angle, you cannot yeah. deny that was a flinch. I'm sorry, Mr. Frost, but... Uh, according to your scorecard, right if Waylon Frost right wins this three. round, he wins the fight. Well, no, I've got it neck and neck. I oh, you do? I the right to alter my scorecard. Oh, well, you can't alter it. Well, too late, I did. I'm not a real judge, Dan Helley. He knocks the, the cotton out of his ear, but it doesn't appear to stun slap Jesus. I give slap Jesus that round. Fair blow. I agree with you. He took that well. He smiled at him. The gamesmanship was there. Waylon Frost giving the red corner a hug. That's his buddy, Donovan Cross, who got him into the sport. Going to be interesting to see how the judges score this card. The one thing that I had an issue with with Waylon Frost was he rolled a little too early. That's yep. technically flinching. He also would step out of the box right away. Correct. Correct. It, the rolling, the flinching, whatever you want to call it. It wasn't called, though, by the referee, though. So even though we saw it, it can't affect the scorecard. True. But here's Slap Jesus going on one. I still don't like that technique. There's a nice counter from Waylon Frost. Slap Jesus took that round, if you ask me. Very close, though. Here's round two. Slap Jesus once again. Good blow. But I feel that the, the return from Waylon Frost here, I mean, that was a weird strike, kind of a club, but the hair going everywhere, I give it to Frost. And this is the winning blow and a potential foul as well from Waylon Frost. The return just wasn't very good from Whalen. And Jesus, the way he stood there, the way he took it, wait for the smile right now, didn't go nowhere. It's a close one, but I got slapped Jesus. Michael Smith winning by a decision. All right, let's see if the judges line up with you once again. So far, you are one for one on the decisions, one Michael one. Bisping. I know. And... Now for the official decision brought to you by Kudo Snacks, Kudo Protein Popcorn. Get pop with Kudo today at kudosnacks.com. Justin Bernard, our power slap announcer, making it official. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. Judge Cheatham scores it 29-28, Frost. Judge Miglior scores it 29-28, Smith. And Judge Camillo scores it 30-27 for the winner by split decision, Waylon Ice Cold Frost. There it is. Interesting scorecards, a 30-27. I mean, the reality is they were all kind of close, but I wouldn't have said a 30-27. Never in a million years, but still, not the worst judging we've seen go down in the apex. <laughs> Waylon, Ice Cold Frost, the 26-year-old, came in as the plus 190 underdog, and he gets his first and biggest win in Power Slap over arguably the biggest and most popular personality on season one of Power Slap Road to the title in Slap Jesus. Charlie, take it away. Here with the winner, Waylon Frost, who congratulations. You just got the win over arguably one of the most popular competitors in all of Power Slap. A well-deserved win, but how are you feeling right now? Uh, I mean, my, my face is a little sore, but, but I'm good. Do you want me to hold this? Oh, no, I wanted you to scoot a little okay, closer. Okay, I got you. No, I feel good. Uh, yeah, Slap Jesus is probably the most viral guy in this sport. That's for sure. He's definitely an entertainer. People know him. Um, yeah, I just want to come out and get a win. I knew I had to win. I feel like my last two losses were kind of flukes. Um, I just knew I had to come up here and prove myself, prove I could take some hits and dish them out. So 
Well, you've been putting in a lot of work training with Donovan Cross, another competitor and now a coach in Power Slap. One of the big things you said you were working on was transferring your weight a little better. How do you feel that served you here tonight? I felt like my first two hits were really good. I feel like I really stuck to my technique and, you know, did what I had to. I felt like on that third one, I kind of gave up a little bit. I didn't hit as hard as I could have on that third one. But, um, I mean, it, it worked. We got the W, so. Well, I mean, you took a couple pretty hard shots. The fact that you were able to deliver so nicely afterwards says a lot about you. Uh, how do you feel you've improved from the first time we saw you out here until you standing here tonight? Uh, technique as far as taking those shots. I had no idea how to take a shot when I first came out here. Like I told you, you know, I knew about this sport probably two weeks before I came out and did it. So I learned how to take those shots. I learned how to not be so stiff and, uh, you know, just, you know, be ready to eat it. So well, you told me yesterday you have your eye on a title shot. I think you are well on your way. So congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. Guys, back to you. The pride of Arizona, Waylon Frost getting it done tonight. Thank you, Charlie. Folks, heavyweights are on deck. Keep your eye on this man, Damian DeBell, the youngest fighter on the card, is also the most powerful, a veteran of other promotions and an assistant coach on Power Slap Road to the title. DeBell looking to ring some bells when he steps to the table. But the Iron Giant has other ideas. Dwayne Crespo brings eight years of kickboxing experience and a 2-0 Power Slap record into the night. For Crespo, it's all about game plan. And he's got a special one all dialed up for the biggest night of his power slap career. Darius has arrived, one half of our main event and one of the coaches on the inaugural season of Power Slap Road to the title. Darius the Destroyer has proven to be one of the most devastating slap fighters on the planet. A perfect 17-0 record will be on the line and so will heavyweight gold. All he has to do is get by this guy. Wolverine has 11 pro slap fighting wins on his resume. His only losses to Darius the Destroyer, including an epic 27 rounder in their last meeting. So what he has done is add 20 pounds of muscle. Could be a different story this time around. Speaking of muscle and power, Damian DeBell brings it in spades. The youngster from Florida is one of the most physically gifted slap fighters we have seen. There are several good reasons Damian DeBell coached with Wolverine and stands to strike for the number one contender spot. He's big and powerful. The Bell enters with a wingspan of over six foot seven inches, just below multi-time NBA All-Star Russell Westbrook. And the man puts it to work. His strikes consistently generated 230 joules of kinetic energy, essentially the measure of how much damage is inflicted on impact and BR. He was also the only competitor on tonight's card to register a human force measure of over 50,000 Franklins, a measure that combines the power and energy a strike delivers. Safe to say Dwayne Crespo hasn't been up against numbers like that in the house thus far. Can his chin hold up? We'll find out. Buckle up and don't blink. The big boy is about to rock the stage with Dwayne Crespo standing as a two to one favorite over DeBell. Top five heavyweights battling to get to the winner of tonight's main event title fight. Damien DeBell and Dwayne Crespo don't like leaving matters in the judges' hands, so don't blink when this one starts. This opportunity with Power Slap, it's already changed my life and it could blow up even more if people really take a chance with it. I got involved in Power Slap 
from my previous events that I've been doing. I was the assistant coach on the Power Slap show, mainly because I wasn't 21, so I couldn't compete. I was just there to kind of assist in the training, like just there to kind of help out with whatever Ron needed help with. Yeah, it's a pretty cool concept, just being able to say like, I helped pioneer this sport, like I was helping guide this sport to where it is now, especially if it blows up into something huge, like it'd be really nice to be able to say, yeah, I was the first assistant coach there, or I was there when it all got started. I was in the first main event. It's just really cool to be the first in something. I definitely have more experience when it comes to this specific sport. Slapping is a whole different thing to MMA, boxing, all that. You could really mess someone up if you don't know the rules or how to really safely slap somebody in the face, is how I'd like to put it. This fight with Dwayne is very important because the winner of this fight gets a shot at the winner of Darius and Wolverine. That's basically your shot at the belt, which is a pretty big deal if you ask me, so. It's really just going to come down to his chin versus my chin, and I don't think I'm losing in that game. I went to Vegas, no experience, no expectations. Once I found out what it was, I realized that this could be something and it's my new dream. I live in Hornell, New York, population 8,000 people. Very small town, definitely drive two minutes to miss it. My job is I'm a professional fighter and I'm a coach out of Vicious Elite Kickboxing. I have been grinding in my sports for a while, putting it all in, in the MMA world, the kickbox world, and now the slap world, really putting in the time. I got involved in Power Slap. There was this Facebook group message on the fighters page looking for pro fighters to do this new combat sport. I wrote them back. I was like, I could, I could use the money, and they flew me out and found out what it was. In my first fight uh, for Power Slap, it was crazy, picture-perfect match. I won the coin toss. I wanted to go first, so I hit first. It's over. It's over. Do not get up. It's over. He fell down, didn't get back up. It felt unreal. I, I remember smiling for like three hours. Jason Herzog raised my hand. I won in front of Dana White and just realizing everything I've worked for over the years, it became like a nice, cool moment, of just like happiness. I'll be facing Damian DeBell for the number one contender spot. Winner gets a shot at the title. This fight for me is pretty awesome. He's put a name for himself in the slap world. I believe that I have more experience in the combat world, and I believe all that translates to this sport. I know my abilities, and I know that I could win this fight. I could get my hand raised. People will believe very soon. Dwayne the Iron Giant Crespo won the toss, a minus 200 favorite, and has yet to lose in Power Slab 2-0 with a knockout. And that is a big thing, winning the toss. Of course, it means you get to go first, but if you ask Crespo, he says that Dibble is already lost mentally. You know, he said because he's lost the coin toss, he's so worried about the shot that Crespo's going to deliver. And listen, we've seen it before, the man has ridiculous power, calls his shot, says, stay down, you ain't gonna get back up. And he's done it in many forms. Muay Thai, mixed martial arts, bare knuckle boxing, professional boxing. There isn't a combat sport that this man hasn't turned his hand to. We're talking of hands, slapping people with those giant hands at 260 pounds. That's what he's preferring right now. Yeah, I've been active in combat sports for the last eight years. I asked him how he got his nickname, the Iron Giant. You know, he said it was kind of cool. My friend circled up around me and just started yelling out random nicknames. And uh, one said Iron Giant. So I went with that. I'm like, oh, that's good. I like the Iron Giant for the man from Rochester, New York. Hails from Linden, New Jersey. That's where he grew up, living in Rochester right now. Again, wins the toss, and a minus 200 favorite is the Iron Giant, Dwayne Crespo. Damian DeBell, they call him The Bell, the youngest fighter on the car, just 21 years old, the assistant coach on the first season of Power Slap. Rode the title three and one in his career, Charlie Arnold. Yeah, Damian DeBell's resume is pretty ridiculous because listen to this, everybody. He's currently taking classes at UCF, studying for the LSAT, while at the same time, obviously here to earn the number one contendership to the heavyweight title. He's been slap fighting for two years now. He has his eye on Darius, and speaking of his eye, 
the Bell plans to use the money from his win tonight to get LASIK surgery because he also hopes to eventually start boxing as well. Yeah, that's right, because you can't compete in professional boxing with contact lenses and, of course, not with glasses on either. That wouldn't be good. So, yeah, wants to make some money here, turn his hand to boxing. Either way, he's a big, powerful guy. The Tale of the Tape brought to you by 10X. 10X your business, 10X your income, 10X your life. Go to CardoneVentures.com. Just 21 years old is Damian DeBell, both men six feet two inches tall. And how about that massive, massive eight inch reach advantage for DeBell? The guy has some serious, serious power. Our power slap announcer, Justin Bernard. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is three rounds in the power slap heavyweight division. Introducing first, striking out of the blue corner. He stands six feet, two inches tall, weighing in at 257 and one half pounds. Out of Rochester, New York, Dwayne Iron Giant Crespo. And now, striking out of the red corner, he stands six feet, two inches tall, weighing in at 251 and one half pounds. Out of Ruskin, Florida, Damien the Bell to Bell. And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Mark Smith. Winner of the coin toss and striking first, Dwayne Crespo. All right, gentlemen, to the center. All right, here we go. Been looking forward to this one. Our Defense featured prelim. And Damien DeBell. Striking first, hand count. Right on three. First in Pitching human Malcolm force right by a lot. Go gonna right be on hand the on three. First. You must measure. measure. Right on three. Look at that. He's got the hand on the face for an extended period of time. Like, get used to this feeling, buddy, because it's coming. Two. Look at that wind up. Oh. Oh. DeBell staring him down. That's how you take a shot, grab you just stick. look at your man. Defense, grab the stick. You just say, that was nothing. Yeah, that the best you've got. Cover, so, so Crespo's a powerful man. He ranked fourth in the slap like mansion in terms of good. human it force. It 40 seconds. Hey, Bell easy ranked feet. first in human done, force yours. and first Ken, in impact as he eats this feet one. Down. <laughs> and 21 years old. Let's mention that again. I mean, that's insane. Right a very young three. man going on three. This is the first ever Measure. strike in power slap for Damien DeBell. Let's see what this big man's got. One. Big wind up. Two. Go. Crespo just shakes it off. Instantly starts, you know, a bit of shit talk. All right, so round one to Crespo. Good job, let's give him some force, baby. Very close. Yep, let's Both go. Both legal shots, look at those feet planted firmly. 30 seconds. No movement whatsoever. Seconds. Again, he, he was an assistant coach on we the cover. show, and that's one of the right things I really focus on, two. keeping those heels measure. on the ground. Money, okay? Measure. Round two for Crespo. One. Took that well. Fair blow. That was another good shot, but DeBell doesn't move. This is what I was talking about with Waylon Frost yeah, when he turns and kind of walks from the table. This, to me, much more intimidating when you take a ball yeah. you don't hand. even budge. Hand. Right hand, right hand on, three. on three. Must measure. Measure. On three. Here comes the bell. Two. Oh. Wow. Ring the bell! No, do it. He is not getting up. Referee's called it off already, but I tell you what, a hundred seconds, he would still be on his hey, back. Hey, the doctors are in, the officials are in. I mean, that is a serious knock. Look at the blood. The bell has no. told, my goodness. Oh, my word. Tonight's Monster Knockouts brought to you by Monster Energy Unleashed the Beast. The bells, the bells. Let's take a listen to that. 
Look at the eyes gone as well for Crespo. Now poor old Crespo, he's still on the, di uh, on the deck, but let's take a listen. Two. Oh my God. Oh my God. That is a sickening thud. Oh. That was ridiculous power. As I mentioned earlier, number one in human force, number one in impact power, and you could see immediately. Disgusting power. Oh, look at the fan reaction. Uh. Wow. Yeah. I couldn't wait to see this guy slap because we've seen all the metrics. We've read the numbers. <laughs> Crespo now yeah, well, in the chair. Those metrics are correct. Because well, that might have been the hardest slap of the night so far. That was incredible. And now for the official decision brought to you by Kudo Snacks, Kudo Protein Popcorn. Get popped with Kudo today at kudosnacks.com. Justin Bernard, the stage is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, after six seconds into round number two, referee Mark Smith calls a stop to the match for the winner by knockout, Damien the Bell to Bell. Here with the winner, Damien DeBell, the new number one heavyweight contender. How are you feeling? That was definitely the hardest slap we've seen all night. Uh, honestly, I'm feeling pretty great. You know, it wasn't the strongest hit I've taken, so it wasn't no thing to eat it, but he was running his mouth. He thought it was going to be an easy fight, but obviously he didn't know what I was made of. Well, we now know what you're made of. You really, you, you said it yourself earlier, you're a pioneer in the sport. You've already been one of the coaches here. Uh, what is your trajectory here in Power Slap? Because after we've seen that, I, I feel like you're gonna go very far. Oh, I'm taking the belt. Taking the belt, gonna hold the belt for a little while, you know, play around with it, and then we'll see where it goes from there. What was your mindset uh, heading into that knockout round? Uh, did you know that you were going to have such power behind that slap? The first one was just to really test him out, see where he was at, and then the second one was just to finish him, you know? There's nothing to it. All right, well, you have some very lofty goals. We just said you now are the number one contender to the heavyweight title. Who would you like to face? Mm. Uh, you you like know who you want to face. No, you, you, told, you just told me this week. I, I want to face both of them, but Darius is definitely number one on my list because he's just, he held the heavyweight belt, so, you know, I got a gun for him. All right, well, Damian DeBell, congratulations. Your new number one heavyweight contender in Power Slap. Thank you, thank you. The post-fight interview brought to you by Kudo Snacks, Kudo Protein Popcorn. Get pop with Kudo today at kudosnacks.com. One of the Nelk boys coming up to say hi to Damian DeBell. What an impressive performance for this future lawyer studying for the LSAT, that means yeah. he's going to go to law school, Bisping. I mean, you wouldn't think so, but this man, he's got a very calm demeanor, but never mind that. That's been amazing prelims. We've got four title fights on deck, Dan Helly. Yes, we do. Just getting warmed up here at the Apex. The main card is on the way. Let's get it going. Starts right now. 